Fernandinho turns 34 in May, and Manchester City know that they must cast around to find someone of his calibre. And they know that it won't be easy. As Pep Guardiola, City's manager, said before the game against Wolves, maybe there aren't many, but there are players who can play in that role, specifically Fernandinho's role. It's so difficult to find. He knows the Premier League, he knows everything, and that's important, but of course, for the next season, it's an important target to find. He'll be 34 and he cannot play every few days. In fact, over the festive period, Fernandinho couldn't play at all due to an injury, and the back-to-back losses suffered by City were both without him, as first John Stones and then Ilkay Gundogan sought to plug the gap. City are far more successful with the Brazilian in the side than without. It's also worth stating that the two recent victories achieved without Fernandinho were against Rotherham and Burton Albion. It's in games against Premier League and European opposition where his absence is felt, and that's where it matters most. So, what does Fernandinho do that's so important? He's essentially a defensive midfielder who is capable of playing higher up the pitch as well. He's able to cover and screen as well as he can pass, get forwards or shoot. In other words, he's pretty much the complete midfielder. In City's 4-3-3, he's the linchpin, sitting behind the two aggressively attacking central midfielders who split high and wide to overload the wider areas of the pitch with the wingers and fullbacks, safe in the knowledge that the athletically gifted and tactically intelligent Fernandinho will plug the gaps left. As City attack and cluster players out wide, with the central midfielders pushing into the half spaces, Fernandinho will also find space in which to push up, or take possession and switch the play, or pass forwards to runners. Should City lose possession, he's able to shuttle across and cover the gaps, using his superb reading of the game and his pace, as well as his ability to work with the centre-backs to thwart counter-attacks. Because he gets forwards, this often happens to be quite high up the pitch, and can even lead to regaining possession rather than just stopping attacks, allowing City to counter the counter and attack again against a defence that thinks it's just got rid of the threat. He's also adept at the tactical foul, another facet of understanding the game state, knowing when it's worth surrendering a free kick to stop an opposition move, and when City can regroup into a more defensive pose without giving away a foul. His positional sense means he can drift into spaces during the build-up from deep, and then carry the ball, launch a long or wide vertical pass, or rotate it back to the centre-backs or full-backs to ensure City keep possession. In this, his passing range is important, but perhaps more so, his ability to judge when and how to pass is the key. Fernandinho's combination of defensive nows, ball-winning ability, creative passing and dynamic running is obviously extremely hard to replicate. His tactical awareness and reading of the game has developed both at Shakhtar Donetsk as well as under Guardiola and Manuel Pellegrini. His experience, as much as his abilities, make him tough to replace. So, where does City start? Well, recruitment in football has tended to follow a certain path in the past. A manager or a director of football uses their contacts book to secure a player who's caught the eye over a number of games or even at a tournament, scouted in person and maybe based on recommendations of other trusted football sources. Now, however, there has been an increase in the use of data-driven analytics and video scouting. The sensible approach is a marriage of the two, using stats and video to whittle down a short list of players who are then also observed in person. City won't take an old-school approach. Data will be used, but this possesses two further questions. Firstly, which data? Fernandinho is the sort of all-rounder that's almost impossible to replicate, so does City privilege his defensive actions or his deep-lying creativity and attacking input, or try and find an amalgam of the two while being aware that it's highly unlikely anyone can replicate both aspects quite as well? In other words, is compromise better than specialisation? Secondly, while data scouting can turn up brilliance in surprising places, such as Angolo Kante in Ligue 2, it's unlikely that City would, at this point, take a relative unknown when their finances and reputation mean they could attract a safer bet, even if it does cost more. So, who should place Fernandinho? Well, Jorginho, whose 2017-18 season at Napoli showed Fernandinho-like all-rounded qualities, albeit within a very specific system geared to his style of play, isn't available. Sergio Busquets wouldn't likely leave Barcelona. And Yuzu Kimmich, a right-back who, like Philipp Lahm, is gifted enough to be a world-class defensive midfielder, probably wouldn't leave Bayern Munich even if they were prepared to sell. It is also worth noting that City do have a few players who could step in. Gundogan could improve defensively, while Fabian Delft could also be used in that position, although again, he can be caught out in the defensive phase. But there are some options for Manchester City that could be both reasonably priced and fit most of the bill to replace Fernandinho. The first is Miralem Pjanic. 
Now, Pjanic is as good or better than Fernandinho creatively from the deep position, but doesn't contribute as much defensively and could command a hefty price tag compared with other suggestions, especially as Juventus are in a strong position and wouldn't need to sell. But he's a silky player and he reads the game beautifully. Leandro Perades has excelled for Zenit St. Petersburg this season after impressing at Roma. He's an Argentina international and looks a strong all-round fit to take over from Fernandinho when price is also considered. He's also young enough to be part of the team for quite some time. Roberto Gagliardini has not played much for Inter this season, but has a strong defensive game, carries the ball well and presses well, while also contributing creativity from midfield and comfortable in a 4-3-3. He's an excellent all-rounder, but perhaps has insufficient top-level experience. Marcelo Brozovic, also Inter, would be a possible fit too, but is likely to cost significantly more. Martin Darun is part of Gian Piero Gasparini's superbly exciting Atalanta side, and impressed in an otherwise poor Middlesbrough side, but bafflingly did not get another chance with the Premier League team. Excellent defensively and as a reader of the game, contributes less offensively in his current team than Fernandinho does but is still developing and he made his Dutch national team debut in 2018. Florian Grilic is probably the most left field choice but plays for a very astute manager in Julian Nagelsmann at Hoffenheim and shows the sort of positional fluidity that Guardiola admires. He's defensively strong and a good passer of the ball and at 23 has room to develop under the right tutelage. Whoever City choose, they will have significant shoes to fill. What is certain is that City will not just throw money at someone. A role as important as Fernandinho's requires real consideration and thought to replace.